All right, glad you're back with us. This is Heath Close with BuildBox, and I'd like to welcome you to a bonus 11th video in the Make Your Own Game series. In this bonus video, we're going to be talking about polishing your game. We're going to discuss what polish is. We'll take a look at some late stage design decisions that were made before uploading Glitch to the app stores. And I'll share with you the one final step to making it publisher ready. Polish often means toning it down. This concept aligns with a philosophy I use during the design phase when making design decisions. Always go too much first, then dial it back. I never spend time finding what's just right because I'll never find it. Find too much first because that's usually obvious. Then dial it back and you'll eventually come across just right. This is a much faster way to make design decisions. So the first thing we will see is a change in the main menu. In the previous version of the main menu, the logo repeats three times. We decided that didn't quite look right. That was too much. To polish a game and make it publisher worthy, we want minimal and we want simple, but we want sleek. It needs to look simple but attractive. Too simple can sometimes look unfinished, but sleek looks like you do simple on purpose. And there's a difference. So we cleaned up the UI, making sure we went simple, but sleek. That's polished. To enhance the glitch-like theme, there were also glitchy animation elements that were added to the main menu components. Another change that was made was to completely bypass the hard mode UI and turbo mode UI and take people straight to those modes from the same main menu. This is a quicker, less complicated experience. It allows a single main menu to access the entire game. So a coin tracker was added to show available in-game currency for those unlock buttons. This also means that the coin shop UI was completely removed and the character shop was moved to the game over UI. There was also an info node added to the game with a button in the main menu showing credits for the game and letting people know how they could go about editing the game themselves. This is a unique feature that I am not aware of existing for any other game out there today. On the gameplay UI, there were also changes made to the pause button. Using a backdrop and a white pause button, the button seems easier to see. Also, in the UI itself, the button is simply an overlay on those images rather than using images within a button. This makes for an easier layout and certainly easier to press for the player. The amount of coins was also removed from the interface and replaced with a distance counter, so the achievement of staying alive could be rewarded and tracked on the Game Over UI. We also felt when the game UI opens, the tap to play was making things a bit crowded in the upper third, so it was moved to the lower third, given a background, and was animated to exit the UI by the time the UI reached its idle animation. Let's take a look at the Game Over UI. With the removal of the coin shop, it was directly incorporated into the Game Over UI. This brings an elegance to the Game Over interface. Elegance in game design is when an element or group of elements can serve more than one purpose. We discussed similar elegant changes made to the main menu, having the mode shop be in one centralized interface. The Game Over interface now serves as the character store as well. So a coin counter was brought in to show how much in-game currency is available. Also, as I mentioned, you can now see the distance being tracked on the Game Over UI as well. Let's talk about gameplay. The first change you will notice is that more scenes were built out. And even though we think more are needed, it's a step in the right direction to making Glitch Publisher ready. You'll probably notice by now that our coins have changed. Realizing that our graphics utilized shadows to give dimension but were not real 3D, we felt the use of a three-dimensional coin might be an aesthetic mismatch. And after further study, 
the coins were changed to be round, like the character, and not have any sharp edges, like the enemies of the game. And even though that's a late stage design decision, it's one that can be made easily and quickly inside of BuildBox. We also thought that when the character picked up a coin, showing the coin amount in the traditional way didn't quite look right at the speed this game takes place. So the decision was made to incorporate visual feedback of the amount to be made part of the action's animation. Moving on to sounds and music, changes were made to the music used in the menus and during gameplay. Although the original music was high energy, we felt it was too loopy. After hearing it the 237th time, it was just too much, so more ambient music was designed for the game, including glitchy components to enhance the theme. The character defeated sound was also replaced with a sound that included an explosion and music. Doing this allowed it to bleed into the game over UI nicely and even loop back into the gameplay. In order to use this unique tactic, we had to stop the game music from playing. An MP3 of silence was inserted on the game over UI so that only the defeated sound and music can be heard and then come to a stop. Let's talk about the coin grab now. Recent changes to the second play observer have presented an opportunity to show you another option when designing special entrances. The second play observer has recently been renamed Redirect and has been given some flexibility in its options. Redirect now has options to customize how many plays before the UI redirects the player. The coin grab was modified to use a menu jump instead of redirect, so we could show you that play cooldown can also be used in creative ways. Now the scene with the entrance to the coin grab can only be accessed after 50 player deaths once played. Overall, the changes made bring a simple, sleek elegance to the flow of the experience. The build box team has a rule that a game isn't publisher ready unless it has at least 100 scenes available in a game where scenes are randomized. We have supplied you with the exact version that is now available to play on the Apple App Store and Google Play Store. Feel free to fill this game out with as many scenes as you can. Building out a minimum of 100 scenes will give you two very important things. One, important experience designing levels, and two, you can make this your own game. Thank you for joining me in this bonus video for the Make Your Own Game series. I hope by now you have joined us in the BuildBox community forums. Stop by the official announcements forum and say hi. It'll be fantastic to hear from you. I'll see you there.